PMQ's all about uh, the, the Sarah Everard and, and the fallout from that case. So Keir Starmer, I don't want to say disingenuous because politics is always a game. But but although he accused Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives of playing games, he was clearly laying out his loyally credentials during during that exchange and, and therefore open to the accusation of using PMQs to do so, using that tragedy, mm. that murder to do so. But as a former director of public prosecutions, I, I think he's perfectly entitled to. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, you know what, it is a, is a very emotive, obviously, and powerful issue to go on, but both sides have a very embedded narrative on this. The government will argue we've done far, far more to increase uh, rape prosecutions getting to court and to make more people come forward. Obviously, police uh, have obviously heard many more cases than they did before, but the government, uh, the Labour Party will obviously argue, well, you're starting from a very low base, guys, and it's still a really dreadful situation for many women who are trying to go through this justice situation. 2.4% chance if it's you're a victim of rape Absolutely of seeing a charge, not yeah. even a, not even a gu- gu- guilty verdict. It is incredibly, incredibly difficult um, to get these cases to court. And obviously Keir Starmer will know that with his background well, at the CPS too. more than that, too. actually. And, and it is something, if not the thing, that he considers to be among his greatest achievements as director of public prosecutions. Movement in this area changes in law, um, uh, uh, certainly in approaches to crimes like this. He, he, it's not just a thing for him. It's not just another priority, another issue. I, I, I happen to know that it's something that he cares passionately about, passionately about, and and will presumably bring it into power if, if, if he is to succeed at the next election. Yeah, definitely. And there are people in the Labour Party trying to make... Um, do you remember when Keir Starmer launched all of his missions and there were those people like Jess Phillips trying to fight for him yeah. to make violence against women and girls one of those fifth missions? And I think at the end, of, it just about dropped out and they decided to focus on crime mm. generally. But it, violence against women and girls... Uh, I think is going to be a key part of Labour's election campaign. Uh, Terry's been in touch from Cornwall. He says, Natasha, not taking any daft waffling from James. I think that's a compliment. I, never, I would never do such a thing, I, I think that's Terry. a compliment. Well done. Um, and James says, do you know what you're going to talk about before you come on air, or do you just make it up as you go along? Yeah. Spend hours. We spend hours going over, don't we? Fine tooth comb. Yeah, the sort of last five minutes as I walked down Dotted from T's, crossed the eyes. the studio. Um, while you're here, is there going to be an election in May? I don't think so. No? There is obviously you're an less argument. confident about that than you were about Donald Trump becoming president. Yeah, of the United States. I am less confident about. It. I think there's a better chance okay. of Donald Trump becoming president. A slight, there's, it's always a chance. Of Fifty-two, May forty-eight. No, Donald Trump, I think, is going to become president. Yes, definitely. Um, I don't think that there's going to be a May election, but I could be proved wrong. But the amount of um, yeah, there's an argument going on in government about this, and it mm. very much seems like those in number ten are quite divided about whether to wait or to go long. There are pros and con arguments either way for it. The way I see it is that obviously people are feeling slightly more optimistic, I'm sure, in the spring as compared to as you go into winter and people thinking about winter crisis, how I have no money for Christmas presents, cost of living, energy bills going up again. But equally for the economy, which the Conservatives obviously want to fight on, they are giving themselves more time for the economy to pick up, for GDP to get better, obviously to get out of this recession, fingers crossed, they hope, for interest rates to come down and for inflation to come down. Um, And also I think, you know, with when you're at twenty percent in the polls and you have the power to call an election, why on earth would you do it now? Why would you not just wait to see if something might come it might up be to make ten, it better? You know the answer. There. It might be ten percent by November. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's not beyond the realms of possibility. That's the, that's the Labour Party's argument. If it could get worse, yes. but actually, I think it probably can't. I think this is probably this twenty percent core base of support is probably the lowest that the Conservatives are going. To, you know, prove me wrong if we start going into into you know eighteen nineteen percent and reforms start to take even bigger chunks out of the Conservatives to vote than before but I think don't think it's going to get too much worse for them I think it can only really get better and obviously the longer you wait as well for 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 an election the longer you give Keir Starmer to possibly trip up and obviously that's a bit of hope for the Conservatives of course it is but they have shown obviously with the last few weeks and handle their handling of the the Gaza Israel vote that things can be quite tricky for them. Now speaking of the Gaza Israel vote are we reading too much into this but a few people have picked up on it um, Lindsay Hoyle appears to have taken a vow of silence. He has. We haven't heard very much from him. Do you think that's a coincidence? I think he just wants to try and wait for this all this whole thing to die down. Um, and it's not for lack of trying that we've we have been bidding for the speaker to come on LBC to speak oh, about MP safety and about mm. the fallout from the vote. But I think low many profile. people decide that it's better to keep a low profile. Low um, profile, Lindsay. Yeah, I think. Also, it wasn't a particularly 
obnoxious PMQs, you didn't have many gullicisms. There wasn't, and obviously, but with such a sensitive subject like this, you weren't going to get people screaming at each other over mm. the just back spots on issues yeah. like this. They would have, it, you would expect it to be a bit more muted. And I think Eleanor Lang, the deputy speaker, is going to be doing the budget debate. So I don't think Lindsay's going to be doing that. So yes, he is definitely keeping a lower profile as he tries to to try yeah. and let all of this blow over. I but it I... seems for now he's safe. So I think actually uh, Sheila Fogarty owes me a glass of wine. Do you say it would last? I said I think he would stay. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I, I shall remind Sheila of that if you don't. What is happening now? We're waiting for the budget to begin, really. So usually you'd expect it to be half past 12 or shortly thereafter. Yes, they're always late from Prime Minister's questions, as we well know. Um, but yes, Jeremy Hunt expected in the next few minutes to stand up and deliver what could be the final budget of, of his career, which could be the final budget of this parliament. Um, it could not be. We could, there is some speculation in Conservative circles that if they do go for an autumn November election that they could try and squeeze in an emergency fiscal statement before they go. Uh, anything's possible. Um, and especially if the public finances do pick up a little bit towards the end of the year, they might have a bit more money to play with and they might want to, to try and spend it. Yes, indeedy. Um, it, it, we, I've just been informed we're not taking the news bulletin at half past 12, which means that the uh, budget speech won't begin until at least 20 to 1. That's the way that You're these have to things... fill some time then, Yes, I'm exactly. Afraid. That's the way that these things normally unfold. If we took a news bulletin at half past 12, the budget speech would begin at half past 12 and 17 seconds. But now we've taken a decision not to take a news bulletin at half past 12. It's law, isn't it? I can confidently state it's broadcasting law confidently state that we won't be having the uh the speech until at least 20 to 1 mm -hmm. um I, 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 what do we know already about the budget because what was his name can you remember the name of the one that got fired george you i mean you, you george for leaking the budget to yeah. the evening standard yeah. back in the day I don't know. I don't know who it was that was um, was fired by. It was George. one of the one of the chancellors. Eight chancellors. This, George yeah. Osborne at the end. What it wasn't Osborne. Watch this. All right. This is because we've got WhatsApp now. You can WhatsApp into the studio. Watch this now. Who was it that? Who was the chancellor? There's a. What's the delay, Keith, at the moment? So there's a ten second delay. Who who was the chancellor that had to resign after details of his budget got leaked to the London Evening Standard? What's at me now on oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three? I'm gonna see whether or not it's uh even more reliable means of crowdsourcing information than you um, just Google it really quickly. Oh no, I don't want to Google it because that involves even more effort than just saying lazily on air. Who was it then? So it should come through in about the next three seconds to one and George, George Formby. I'm not going to read out George Formby. You're going to get me in George and Mildred. People aren't taking this seriously, Natasha. No, George and Mildred. It wasn't George and Mildred, and it wasn't George Formby, Matt in Chester, your self-appointed comedian. Who was it? Maybe it wasn't a George at all. I don't know if he had to resign, you know. What? Did he Someone did. Someone did. Don't Google Before it. I'm relying, on, I'm relying on I'm WhatsApp. Go 0345. It. Hugh Dalton. Don't know there where I go. got George from. Hugh Dalton. 1947. Did he resign? He did. There you go. He was the Labour Chancellor. And then, After details and then, were published in an evening newspaper before his speech. Uh, fair play to Ruby, who just texted. Um, well done, Ruby. No, no, Ruby tested text testing, which is it's quite an in-joke, that, which you weren't here for. But, but yes, whoever sent Hugh Dalton... Uh, Brendan sent Hugh Dalton, added Scott Melvin. They're all coming in now. Daniel says George Foreman. Declan says George Gallagher. It's not even funny because it wasn't George, <laughs> was it? It was Hugh. And there are no famous people called Hugh apart from Hugh Laurie. I think um, I'm getting it confused, but there was a there was a George Osborne budget where he was quite heavily criticised because a lot of it did appear. Well, I think in, he broke lots of the leaks. seal, as it were. And since then, mm. it's no longer been a convention or a mm. tradition that you're not supposed to do it. So, uh, listen, sorry, I, I, I interrupted myself interrupting you. What do we know about the budget? So we do know uh, that the Chancellor is widely expected to cut two pence off national insurance uh, contributions at this budget, which he says, the Treasury says, is going to be worth an average of around 450 quid. We know that he's going to extend the fuel duty. What are you doing? I don't know what that means. National insurance Does means that, you're going to get a tax cut. No, no I, I knew I was going to get a tax cut because I'm already quite well off and he's a Tory. But what, what exactly does it mean? It, it, do you, I mean, no, no punishment if you don't but what what does that mean so if you're earning around twenty five thousand pounds yeah. you will see a cut of around 250 pounds in your pay packet probably in about a month or two's time and but national insurance goes to fund things doesn't it so they will see less funding that's not quite how it works. Is it it goes into the general treasury taxation okay. pot, so it doesn't actually stop that, that money from going to other things. It just means that the Chancellor will have to raise 
taxes elsewhere to pay for it. And I think what is going to be the message out of this budget is going to be all of the little things that are going to be buried deep inside those books, those really long, huge books I'm going to have to read later this afternoon. There's going to be lots of tax rises, small incremental ones across the board to try and pay for what's going to be a £10 billion tax rise, which we don't have the money for. OK, well, well, well just do some famous hues because people are using WhatsApp and it's, it's, it's rude to ignore them. Hugh Grant, of course. Hugh Jackman, Hugh Bonneville, Hugh Edwards, lots of Hughes. Uh, Hugh Dennis, we like Hugh Hefner. Um, oh, him giving the budget would be uh, George fantastic. George Dawes and lots of people sending him Hugh Janus. Who's that? Think about it. Carry oh, on. Oh, well, for oh, goodness no, we're going sake. live now. Here we go.